So real quick, I'm just going to go over the components of the boat, what's going to be going on it. First, I've got these rod holders. i got six of them. Four of them I made. Two of them are these uh, little clamp-on guys. They'll work just fine, I think. Second, got my navigation lights. Got these off of uh, Amazon. One's red, one's green. Those are all going to get hooked up to a switchboard so I can turn them on and off as I please. Here I have holders for stringing wire around the boat so I don't have a big mess of wires all over the place. I'll be able to keep them all kind of organized. Got my inline fuse holders. Now these are going to keep uh, my electronics safe from uh, surges of electricity or whatever. I actually talked to an electrician buddy of mine and he said these are kind of a waste of time if you're just running it off of 12 volt. But since I got them, I'm going to use them. These were going to be my nav lights. I got those real cheap on eBay. And they are real cheap. They're just kind of flimsy little little things. Definitely not quality pieces of lighting like that. Um, here we've got get rid of that other piece. There, we've got connectors for connecting all the electronics to the uh, switchboard. They all take this little male adapter thing. I guess these are female adapters. But the, uh, the switchboard's going to have a male adapter that just slides inside of there. That's how that's going to hook up all of my wiring connections. They're going to be made with these crimp and heat shrink waterproof splice things. I've got two different sizes. So I'm going to have uh, some different gauge wire going on here. Now, the one thing I don't have here is the switchboard. I have an eight gang switchboard, means it's going to have eight switches. It's going to have a... Uh, a cigarette lighter port, a 12 volt port, and then two USB ports, as well as a, uh, a little meter that shows you how much power your battery's putting out. And all that's going to get turned on and off by this switch. This here, I call it my switch switch. This, this switch controls whether or not power is getting to the switchboard so that uh you know e even the display of showing how much voltage is going from the battery to the switchboard is going to draw power and it's going to drain the battery so this guy will shut power completely off or power the boat so that's important here we've got LED light rolls. These are five meters a piece. Let me get it out of the package. I think I picked these up for like 10 bucks a piece or something like that. They're pretty cheap. But it just comes in a roll like that. Now these lights are obviously, I don't know if you can tell so obviously by the camera, but in real life, these are obviously better quality LEDs than those stupid little nav lights that came from eBay. Don't get those, I don't know. They're 12 inch something. I'll show you the package so you can make sure to stay away from them. I. There. Fulfillment Shipping Center USA from Irwindale, California. 
piece of shit. All right, with that said, these LED light strips are gonna go up the side of each gun wall so that uh, the interior is gonna be lit up. These are, these are bright red LEDs. I'll, uh, I'll light them up here in just a little bit, show you what they are, but these are actually pretty bright. These actually are so bright that they might be um, kind of annoying after a while. So that brings us to our next piece, which is dimmer switch. This is going to allow me to control how much light gets put into the, uh, the interior of the boat. Say we want to just have a little bit of light to see what we're doing. Turn it down. If we need to turn the brightness up. It's got this little knobby. Wires hook in there. This will be good. Um, marine epoxy for uh, doing these rod holders. These, let me go over these rod holders real quick. I made these, I just bent up a piece of metal, welded it to small thread with a wing nut, and I bought these bases. These bases are a Drift Master something. I've got a package laying around here. Drift Master Rod Holder Base Pro 202B. That's what I got. These are going to sit on the round rail of the boat. Get screwed down. The marine epoxy is going to go on the bottom there. So that'll be, that'll be my rod holder. Kind of fuzzy. That'll be that. I've got four of these. I've got two that just clamp onto the side of the boat. These are kind of cheap. They should do all right. Um, lots and lots and lots of rivets. Lots of rivets. I've got an aerator for a, a live well. Here, this is going to attach to the floor. This is uh, just, just a loop I got at Menards. And what this is going to do is have a rope attached to it. And then the rope is going to attach to the tiller handle of my mud motor so that the prop suspended out of the water when I want it to be. It'll be nice to have a, a little loop that'll lay flat when I need it to, or it'll pop up when I need it to, to hold the, uh, that tiller handle. It's really important for running a mud motor. You've got braces riv nuts for doing the floor hinges more uh, supports there got the rails that i'm going to make the uh the frame of the deck with now these guys here these are going to be my uh my hatch let's get the open one these are going to be my hatch handles I got these, got these on eBay. Got a lot of stuff on eBay. Those are just little, little locking slam hatch handles. You can see how it works there. Now they come with a little key so that you can lock them. Not very intricate key, I'm sure. Some lockpick would have zero trouble getting into these, but uh, for what I need them for, just as a general deterrent of, hey, that's a locked hatch, these will work just fine. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to be keeping anything too valuable in there, so. I think those will do just fine. I like these ones better than the plastic ones. 
I see the plastic ones just being able to be ripped out. Those ones maybe not so much, who knows. Got wire, got more wire and stuff over there. And these are gonna go to the electrical components, to the battery, to the switchboard, all that. Um, this is my uh, shop cat. She's gonna be helping me assemble this boat. She's, uh, she's kind of the brains of the operation around here. Gonna paint one of those mouths like they have on fighter jets on the front of it. So I've got red, black, and white. Those are the three colors I'll be needing. Gonna have rope. It floats half inch, 35 feet. Smooth braid rope. Horn, toolbox, gotta have your tools. Um, these seats are gonna get mounted on there. These guys are just little, little clamp on spring loaded seats. And they swivel too. So this guy. Um, I can't, can't really show you with the camera in my hand. So these spread apart and they get pulled back together with that little spring that's inside there. And those, uh, so these are going to clamp onto the seat. Attached to that is a swivel base. Attached to that is a seat that folds out. That'll be. A lot more comfortable than riding on that solid aluminum bench seat. Uh, not solid aluminum, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. So there, we're gonna have a trolling motor at some point. I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna mount that. Now this is what the uh, the deck and the frame's gonna be made out of, or the, the, the floor and the deck. This top piece, it's 5 8 inch plywood. It's just normal plywood. Uh, it's got the one side sanded. This isn't treated plywood. Treated plywood weighs so much more than this. So what I'm going to do is take this can, Thompson's water seal, and just seal the ever-living crap out of everything and then paint it so that Hopefully, I won't have to deal with any wood rot or water logging for a long time. Uh, here we've got this bottom board's going to be the floor. I might have to get might have to get another uh, bottom board and more pieces of foam. Uh, right now, I'm more concerned about getting the front half of it done. So this, this will be enough to get the front half done. This is a 3 8 inch plywood. These are half inch pieces of foam. Just the, the pink insulated foam. High density extruded polyesterine something. You can look it up. It's got a pink panther on the front of it. Yeah, a whole bunch of shit on top of that or else I'd show you. But... Yeah, so it's going to go foam, floor, that 3 8 inch piece, framing, and then plywood. That, uh, the 5 8 inch, that's going to make up the deck. Uh, I'm going to have various hatches cut out of it. Get those hinges. And those latches. Um, it'll be cool. I think it'll come together all pretty well. I've got a plan in my head and on paper. Um, hopefully it'll all all go as I expect and uh, won't, won't run into any major hiccups or speed bumps or whatever.
one of the most important pieces of this build is going to be the light bars that mount up front. Here I've just got a uh, 21 inch light bar. Double row. Got flood in spotlights. Like that. Comes with a uh, little, little side mount thing. This is actually really bright. I think I, uh, you know, for for how cheap they are, here I've got four pods, and how this is gonna go. This big guy is gonna be facing out front, and these guys are gonna be angled off the corners of the boat. So we'll have one there. One there, so it'll give me a wide field of view up front. I'm gonna have the other two sticking diagonally off the back, um, probably overlapping just so I can see the tail of my mud motor, make sure that it's not getting into any branches or into the uh, river bank or whatever. Now these guys are actually really bright. They're a lot brighter than I thought they would be I think I got this, this whole kit was like 40 bucks. These, these four lights in the big light bar, it's like 40 bucks uh, on eBay. And these are really bright. Um, a, lot, a lot brighter than I expected them to be. Should be like driving a car down the river, so that would be nice. So as it happens, it is dark outside right now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to jerry-rig these guys up to the battery just to show you how bright they are. Give them a point outside and just show you what kind of, uh, what I can see out there in the darkness. So, I'll do that, turn you guys back on. So, there you guys go. It's nice and dark outside, thoroughly, thoroughly dark. So now, get this light. I'll be able to see so much going down the river at night. All right, that, that building there is easily 50 yards away, 60 yards. It's be like driving a car down the river. This is just the uh, this is just a 21 inch light bar. I'm gonna have those four pods going too. Two of them up front, showing me the sides. So I'll have a good wide field of view. Very bright. You can see all the way down there. I mean, that that white box down there is a beehive, and that's probably 70, 80 yards away. So. I'm quite impressed with these for the, the price. Very bright. 40 bucks for all of them, can't beat that. You know, I was seeing some for like 100 bucks a piece. You don't need to pay that much to get a good light bar. This is this is more than good enough for what I need it for. This is going to work really well. So, there are the basic components of the boat. I might be adding a few things here and there. But uh, for the most part, that's it. That's, that's how I plan on assembling it all. And uh, I'll make sure to have the camera rolling when it's time to put everything together. Before I forget, let's turn on one of these, uh, one of these light strips. Just got it rested on my foot there. 
just to show you how bright these are. There we go. Red on red, black on black, and boom. Those are gonna be nice. You can see what I mean. Maybe you can't on camera, but these are really bright. And uh, after ordering these, I'm glad I also ordered a dimmer switch because these would be obnoxiously bright after a while. Make it a lot easier to see things in the boat though. We won't have to be holding flashlights in our mouths trying to get stuff done. Everything will be lit up. A nice red won't mess with our night vision. It'll be cool. I'll show you how that's going to go on the boat. Off. On. Off. On. Off. On. Boom. Light strips. On the boat. I actually got three of these rolls. And what you can do is on those uh, those little copper spots there, you can cut it and uh, solder on new wire so that you can cut these into strips and have multiple strips of uh, lights. And what I'm going to do with those is eventually I'm going to have these lights running underneath the hatches and attached to door jam switches so that when you open the hatch these lights come on and show you what's in the hatch at night you don't have to be rummaging through there with a the flashlight they'll be lit up as soon as you open the door and when you close it so now that I've showed all the components maybe I should uh, explain what I'm going to be doing with this boat so, there is a company on the Elkhorn River in Nebraska. It's called Uncle Scott's Outfitters. I'm going to be working a patrol boat, going up and down the river, making sure people are being safe, picking up litter, taking care of things. And all this is going to be part of it. But also, this is going to be my catfishing boat. After hours at that place, I do a lot of running up and down the river, checking lines, putting out poles, meeting up with friends on sandbars, stuff like that. So I'm going to need a good boat that's going to be accessible. I'm going to be able to use it at night. Um, hatches to keep things. So that that's what I'm going to be using this boat for. If you had any questions about why I had some of the things that I have here. Um, I've had all winter long to think about what I'm going to put into this boat. The, uh, you know, how I'm going to use it, what needs to go on it, how things will be assembled. And these are the parts that I've... I've gathered so far. And uh, now you might be asking yourself, Jack, there's no boat on this trailer. Just what boat are you going to be building? And the answer is, I don't have it yet. But it's on the way. I ordered it. It's going to be an Alumacraft. 2018 Alumacraft 1542 flat bottom riveted John boat. Um, they were they were already on back order for the 2019s, but for some reason they still had two 2018 models left in their uh, their Arkansas plant. So I said, hell yeah. Ship one up, I'll buy it, build it, take it on the river.
put all that stuff on there. It's going to be one decked out John boat. I'm excited to get building it. I'm excited to show you guys how it ends up. And uh, stay tuned because this is going to be a cool build. More videos to come.